whoever told me this book was bad is a liar. Looks are fierce. Personality, fierce. But challenge, they're fierce as well. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> I like weird shit. I like weird shit. I enjoy something that's a bit out of the ordinary. However, upon careful inner examination, I feel like I'm not reading enough weird books. Like I feel like I'm reading just mainstream stereotypical books. I'm not reading enough weird shit. And so this week I'm going to read weird shit. <laughs> Like, <laughs> it was weird to me. Like, I don't know. I'm going to read the weirdest books on my TBR. So I looked at all the books I own that I haven't read. And I believe these three to be the weirdest. I may be wrong. There may be one of them that's really weird and I just have no idea about it. But I think these are the three weirdest books that I own. This also could be called a Books and Lala recommendations video. Since the majority of my TBR is that, like, this, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> So the first book I picked up was Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Now I've heard a lot of people say, this is a bit weird. Well, I think the, uh, Megan, Megan, found your words. <laughs> so I think this is about girls where like a plague infects this school and these girls have like plants growing out of them and like weird shit happening to them. Um, and I think the plague infects each of the girls in a different way. But from what I've heard, it's just a bit of a wild ride. But I've heard a lot of people say that the ending is either really, you know, unsatisfying or like other people are okay with it. <sighs> I'm so excited. This is one of the books which I've been most excited to read because a lot of you don't like it. It seems people love it or they hate it. And I just want to know which of those categories I fall into. I think I'm going to love it, if I'm honest. I think I'm going to love it. I think I'm going to be obsessed with it and just think it's like the coolest thing ever. But I could be wrong. So that's book one. Book two is Dig by A.S. King. From what I know, this is a story about the family of potato farmers. A.S. <laughs> King is known for weird shit. I think she's the queen of weird shit, to be honest. I've read Please Ignore Vera Dietz and Reality Boy by her. Loved Please Ignore Vera Dietz, gave it five stars. Didn't really like Reality Boy. I think I gave it two or three, but I think that's kind of accepted to be her worst one. <laughs> and I want to finally own one of her books because they were both on audiobook. And I, I feel like she's the kind of author I want to physically read, not read on audiobooks. So I think going forth, I'm going to try and own all her books. But yeah, Dig is like one of the most, uh, as soon as I heard Kayla talking about this, like quite a while ago as well, I was like, wow. I have no choice but to read. I have no choice. Like, it's not even a choice. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. The last book I'm going to be reading, I think is going to be the weirdest one out of the three. I think. I could be wrong, but I think. Uh, and that's Bunny by Mona Award. So this is about a group of girls who call each other Bunny. Like the Heathers, but Bunny. And I think it ends up being a bit of a cult. A bit of a horror, you know. A bit of animal killing. A bit of, just a bit of, just a spice things up, you know? I'm scared. I am a bit of a baby. I don't tend to read horror ever. Like I don't think I, I can't remember the last time I read something that could be considered horror. I read thrillers, but horror is a different ball game, I think. And I don't really watch horror films either. I've watched The Shining. I'm trying to think of any other horror films I've watched. I don't really watch loads. I get scared easily. I have nightmares easily. And so I think I'm gonna be having bunny nightmares. <laughs> I need a bit of spice in my life. We're all, well, not we're all in lockdown, but I think the majority of us are in isolation. For me, at least, every day is the same. Like, literally, I'm doing the same thing every day. And that doesn't bother me. Like, that's pretty much my life anyway. <laughs> but I, I think it just feels especially pronounced during lockdown. So I'm just trying to add a bit of spice. I'm just trying to add a bit of, you know. I don't know what that is. And if Margaret Atwood blurbed this, I just think it's going to be a good time. <laughs> I think I'm going to start with Wilder Girls. I think I might love this book. But I'm not, but I'm not sure yet. Whoever told me this book was bad is a liar. <laughs> I don't make the rule. I'm gagged. I'm gagged. Looks 
are fierce. Personality, fierce. But challenge, they're fierce as well. This is a special book. I love how weird this is. And it's probably not even that weird, but I just, ha I can't remember the last time I read a book like this. <sighs> it has such a unique setting that the school, the house they're at, the surrounding woods has such a unique atmosphere that your girl has just been craving in a book for so long. The characters, very interesting, very multi-layered. We don't know everything about these gals yet. <sighs> I'm not spoiling anything and I don't think this is spoiling anything but there's a there's a, a part of the book where one of the characters and we're, we're reading it from her POV and she's drifting in and out of consciousness and the way that that was written like super delirious super all over the place was just so interesting and I was like this is what we need this is the flavor the flavor that we need in books today where's the flavor where's the flavor in this I don't taste anything. I don't taste sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, milk, nothing. It's just what we it's just what we've been asking for. And I don't understand why all of you hate it. There is moments where the way that it's written, the way certain things are phrased, I'm like, what what do we mean? I'm not gonna lie. Like there are moments where um I don't know if it's an intentional choice, <laughs> those moments, or if it's just like weird writing. Has anybody ever told you that you really just, your skin is glowing? Anybody ever told you that? No. Even in the nighttime, like now, with the moon shining. No one says, no, no one said that. Someone explain to me, why does everyone not like it? I like it. But I haven't got any predictions yet. You know, sometimes with like, I don't know if this would be classed as a thriller. I don't really know what this is classed as. But with books like this, where you've got something weird going on and you don't know why it's going on, usually I'm able to come up with a couple of different theories or kind of like all the theories are presented to you in a way and then you whittle them down. I ain't got no theories for why what is happening is happening. And if if someone had more brain cells than me, they probably have come up with theories already, but like, I ain't got anything. I ain't got anything. Oh, God. And like, we're starting to understand that some of the good characters are maybe not good characters, because we had good characters before that turned out to be not good characters, but now there's even more good characters who may not be good characters. You get me? You get me? I have some thoughts. I love this book. I love this book. I love that drink. I love the atmosphere of this book. I love the storyline. I love the weird shit. It kind of feels like I could have I could have dealt with some more weirdness. Weird stuff happens, but I, I wanted it to take a step further. And that I think is the one thing about this book. I wanted everything to be taken a step further. I feel like it could have been maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit more complex, but I did like all the reveals that we had. The ending, I get what people say. I thought something big was gonna happen. I thought like, and I kind of wish that had happened. You've been miscalculating it. But if they weren't gonna do that big, big thing, the ending couldn't have ended in another way. The story would have had to kind of go on to a different plot, which I don't think it should have done. If I wanted it to be longer, I mean just kind of more in depth in the parameters of the story that we have already. I don't mean the story should have been extended. Does that make sense? And the story would have had to be extended if it was gonna happen any other way. And I don't think that would have worked. There are faults with the ending and I get what people are saying now. I think it's like a 4.5. I really loved it. I get what people say about the ending, but it didn't really hinder my experience at all. I didn't hate it. I quite liked the ending and I'm really glad I read it and I don't understand why you all hated it. Like, why does everyone hate- I'm gonna have to go watch some reviews and vlogs of people who did not like this book. Because I don't get it. Like, I think it's a really good book. I just like the high stakes of it and what that causes people to do and how people's 
motivations for doing certain things are revealed after the fact, like 30 pages later, and you're like, oh shit, that's why they did that, or whatever. And now I'm gonna start Dig, another, I mean, this whole video is recommendations that Kayla gave that I'm reading just because she gave. Oh, you're obsessed with me. I don't know much about this plot. I feel like out of all of the three in this video, this is the plot I know least about. And so I'm excited to like get into it. This is fucking weird. Like it's, it's, this is a weird book. I mean, I've said that with other books, but this, uh, I'm not sure if my brain is ready to handle this. You can't skim read this. You have to read it very closely, I feel. For a while, I was thinking, I don't know if my brain is gonna be ready for this today. I don't know if I'm gonna be, you know, ready. Dum dum. <laughs> I think what's happening is we're following a lot of different grandchildren of a couple that we've met. And so I think the story is gonna come together and they're all gonna realize that they're related. And I think they're all potato farmers, right? I don't really know. It took me a long time to get into this book. I feel like now I've got my head around it. I think I'm gonna really enjoy it, but it's just getting my head around it and understanding it but it's fucking weird. Okay, I'm gonna go read. <laughs> okay, so I went into this thinking, oh, it's about a story of potato farmers, whatever. I expected some weird shit from A.S. King, but like, So we have a girl in this who can like teleport, or, like she calls it flickering. So she flickers from place to place to place and talks to all the other people in the book. There's another girl who has fleas, who she runs a circus with and she imagines that she's in front of an audience all the time and everything in her life is like an act. This isn't a book about potato farmers, which is why I thought it was. It's about white supremacy, racism, privilege, ignorance, about family secrets and how they can like rot away under a family. I did not expect the commentary that this was gonna give. Do you know what I mean? It kind of very much caught me off guard. There's a whole storyline in this that is going on from the beginning. Like the storyline is set up from the beginning, but you don't realize until like, I don't know, I would say about there, you know, that, that much through what is happening. Like you, and then you go, oh, <laughs> I think I'm going to give it five stars. It took me, I think because it is weird, it took me like a good a hundred pages to get into the book. Like at the beginning, I was like, what is this? I didn't think I'd like it. But once I got into it, it is, it is something so different to anything I've read. The commentary, the characters, the, the heart of this story is just so good. A.S. King is it, isn't she? Like, they've really got it going. Like, they're... Wow. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Yeah. Now, come on now. I feel like it's a very difficult book to write. Like, I, I kind of don't know how I feel about it. Like, I kind of think I need to read it again. And it kind of detaches itself from you that, like, Often when I give a book five stars, it's because I've had a really deep emotional connection to it. I don't feel like I had a super deep emotional connection to this, but I kind of think in some ways that's the, the point. I feel like it's supposed to feel separate, but also very immediate, but not something that you're, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a very unique premise, massively pulled off. So we're gonna start Bunny, which is the final one. This is the weirdest one yet. I'm only 150 pages in. It's been a bit difficult to like actually get into this, but oh my God. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is messed up on a whole nother level compared to the other two. 
By the way, loving this. Yeah. Really nice atmosphere. In this, we have character Samantha, and she is observing the bunnies. And like, from chapter one, she's like, that can never be me. But like, by chapter four, she's friends with them, kind of. Like, it's, you know, it happens very fast. That's my only complaint so far, is that I wish that didn't happen so fast. We had a bit longer of her observing them from the outside, because it kind of feels inevitable. There, there's be warned for death. Be warned for violent deaths and not in the way you think the way it's written from the beginning before even it gets super weird is weird our narrator's voice narrator's naruto our narrator's voice is very strange the it's one of those types of books where all the rules of logic are kind of going out the window and you just put it on like that and tie it up like that our narrator is acting in really strange ways from the beginning. Like, not just in her relationship with the bunnies, but in the way that she talks to other people and the way she reacts to things. It's very weird. It's very weird. And I just really don't know how I feel about it yet. I don't know if I like it. I like how weird it is. And like, you've got to give it props for that. Because at least it's not just like a boring contemporary. It, she's starting to, you know... Because if you're with the bunnies, you're not quite... You know, you're not quite up there. And there's a scene where she's really starting to, you know, lose it a bit. And just reading that, oh, <laughs> this is fucked up. Okay, I just had to say it. It's fucked up. This is a fucked up book. Filth! I don't know what to tell you. I finished it. I think I told you this is the weirdest one out of them all, and it, it is. It got, it got weirder. It got a bit weirder. <laughs> I think I'm gonna give it 3.5 stars. You can't win them all. I'm very sad. I thought this vlog was gonna be like a 4.5, a five, and like, you know, another really high rating. 3.5 isn't bad. In terms of the idea, and I'm not just talking about the you know, what you hear when they tell you the plot to begin with. I'm talking about, you know, the plot from beginning to end, the idea of the plot from beginning to end, in terms of the vibe, in terms of the weirdness, five out of five. Like, without a doubt, five out of five. But there were times when I was just kind of bored. The bunnies, who are these, you know, privileged white girls who, you know, are doing other shit, but when it boils down to it, they're just privileged white girls. Do you see how that's incredibly offensive? Yes, I do. That's why I said it. When they'd be like being really manipulative and saying weird shit, sometimes their like quartet monologues <laughs> would go on for like a page, two pages. And I would just get bored of what they were saying. They're all saying the same thing. And I just had enough. Like I was just like, oh, all right, you know, whatever. I was just kind of bored with it. Does that make sense? I struggled to read this. There were like two days where I did not pick this up. I didn't want to pick it up. The idea of reading it, I was just like, ugh. I liked some of the reveals at the end. I, I think the ending was the strongest part of it. However, I feel like with the bunnies, there was an attempt to differentiate them from each other, right? I went into this thinking they were all going to be the same carbon copies of one another. But there was some attempt to give them like unique characteristics. But then I just, I could never remember who was who. And so I just got confused half the time. And I think if you're gonna try to differentiate them, it needs to be stronger. I think it's a good book. I think it's a weird, like I'm so happy I read this because it's the weirdness I loved. Like it was a show, do you know what I mean? But in terms of everything else, it was kind of a bit meh. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what some of the weirdest books on your TBR are because after this, I just wanna weird, weird, hey! <laughs> I just wanna read weird shit all the time. I will do nothing but read weird shit. So let me know. Yeah, I hope you're doing really well. Thank you very much for watching as always. And I will see you very, very soon with another video. Bye. I haven't learned anything, but I've had fun and that's all that counts. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> okay, that was a long wave.